Hello ladies, my first Mega Women event is happening here in Dallas, Texas and the details will follow very shortly on all my social media platforms. So what will you expect when you come here to Dallas? You will have free health screenings. You will learn about branding. Somebody is going to pitch their idea and win a prize. But most importantly, one of the things I am passionate about is seeing our young ladies go to the collegiate level. And we're gonna have the opportunity to give somebody scholarship in this meeting. So I hope that you will make plans, you will bring your girlfriends, you will share, but you will follow me on social media for all the updates for the first mega women event here in Dallas. I look forward to seeing you ladies. Why? Because we are a hidden economy. your tribe and who do you surround yourself with? My guest today will tell you all about that but as you know I have a scripture that describes my guest to you. Jeremiah 32 and verse 17. Ah Lord God it is you who have made the heavens and the earth by your great power and by your outstretched arm. Nothing is too hard for you. My guest today is Krista Medlock, and I have just grown to love her because of what she does. But Krista, one of your mantras is, the impossible is fun. So my friend, why? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of fun to do the impossible. Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, we put so much limit, limitation on what we can do mm -hmm. and what we can accomplish. And I just don't believe that there's such a thing, especially if you're activated in purpose. So mm -hmm. it's kind of fun to, for people to realize and actualize their dreams. So yes. there's no, there is no impossible, really. So that's kind of where I birthed that from. So people could realize hope mm -hmm. in their dreams and hope in their purpose. And um, you have done this brilliantly so in, yeah. the, in the short time that I've got to know you, I think, maybe two or three years when you first launched um, your Girl yes, Cave. you came to the first the one. The very first one. <laughs> and, and so I've just been following you ever since. So I'm not a stalker. I just, I just, <laughs> I just like uh, women that radiate who they are and then draw others in. And, you know, you just touched on the impossible. What are some of the impossible things that people have said, Krista, you can't do that, and you just yeah. said, watch me? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think growing up or building myself up professionally, before mm -hmm. I had the Girl Cave, I was – a director, a manager mm -hmm. in marketing for several corporations. And it was, I was this excited young, you know, female mm -hmm. that had to kind of crawl her way up the ranks and right. become a senior leader. And I think there's always that undercurrent that says you can't do it mm -hmm. because you are female, because, yeah. you know, you're, de you know, de 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 depreciating what a marketing role is mm -hmm. and proving yourself as a, a true business strategist. So uh, I think ever, you know, that career change, that career um, path. flight up, yeah. uh, path up, and then also owning a business. Yeah. And what, tell them the businesses that you own, my friend. Yeah. Well, I was, I, I owned a, um, a consultancy for mm -hmm. over 20 years, which was Thriving Brands. Mm -hmm. And that's when I realized I wanted to do more for women in our, in our community, right. women business leaders. So mm -hmm. I started the Girl Cave. So those are the two major businesses. Mm -hmm. And the Girl Cave has been where I've you thrived. Yes. Yeah, Absolutely yeah. thrived. What are the challenges, being a businesswoman, what are the challenges that women face in the marketplace? Yeah. Uh, you know what? I would say that there's a lot of outside influence, influences, obviously, that, mm -hmm. you know, from getting the economics of everything, getting less yes. than what they're worth mm -hmm. being paid for. Um, but what I share with business leaders is the biggest challenge is you. Yeah. Inside the yeah. internal mindset and being confident in who you are and, mm -hmm. and making sure that you're assured in your identity. Because once you're assured in that, there's really nothing anyone can say or do to mm -hmm. prohibit you. You're focused on the path forward. You're convicted in your purpose. Yeah. So I tell people most of, of our challenge as women business leaders is ourselves. You know, one of the things that when I was at the last conference that you had, um, hearing the judge say, 
I loved it. It just stayed in me yeah. that men don't apologize. Right. And they, she's got women that are lawyers in her court. And when they start apologizing, she just stops yeah. and says to them, why do you think that is such a... When we're dealing with ourselves, we apologize yeah. for the authority we carry. Yes, yes. And you know what's funny? I have been around many of the women that were at that summit, mm-hmm. and we catch ourselves now. Yes, oh. I do too. I do <laughs> we too. We stumble over it. We're like, uh, uh, no. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Let me summarize. Yeah. <laughs> so why do you think that is that is the innate thing that we do? I think acceptance. Mm. Uh, but, it, but ex, you know, trying to gain acceptance is a lack of acceptance. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I think, again, it goes back to identity. That's the core. That's mm. the root. You know, everything, worthiness, everything, drive, ambition, mm. clarity, focus comes from identity. Yeah. So. And, you know, the challenge is, because being in that room and being in, seeing your tribe, we are all CEOs, mm-hmm. right? We're, we're all uh, strategists yeah. in our own in our own field. Yeah. But when you get a group of women like that together, mm-hmm. what do you? What is the beauty that you see? Because I think there's always a, a part of you that could do more, that could dream bigger. Maybe mm-hmm. and maybe it's not necessarily do more. I want to be careful with that, but maybe dream bigger. And so when you're around that energy, you. You're, in, you're you're inspired to yes. to tap into that yes. untapped uh-huh. potential or that thing that you just never decided to push forward and, mm-hmm. and move forward and to capture. So I think we break chains. Oh, we break good. chains in those rooms and we get people to start moving in the direction mm-hmm. of of dream catching. Yeah. So I think that's really the, the what really happens in those rooms. I know one of the things when I read about you is a business strategist. Mm-hmm. What exactly is a business strategist? Well, I focus more on the brand strategy side. Nice, so, yes. you know, and actually that's the core and the foundation of every mm-hmm. organization. Yeah. If you're not solidified in brand, and what I mean is not just, you know, logo and identity. I mean, I, what is the messaging and the communication? Okay. What do you mean mm-hmm. to your audience? What do you mean to the world? And so I really help organizations solidify that and develop their culture mm-hmm. for a long-term sustainability Lovely. So of brand and organizational yeah. growth. Because if you've noticed, Companies that go stagnant are typically ones that are kind of duplicitous in who they are as yeah. a brand. Mm-hmm. And so when you solidify that, you do realize a lot of inc- incremental growth. You're mm-hmm. very sure on where you need to go, what yeah. channels you need to be on, okay. how to communicate, and how to reach your audience. Lovely. So, yeah. And what key tips, if you could give key tips, what key tips would you would you give um, women and men listen to this too, what key tips would you give us to solidify that message? I think it's really saying, okay, well, first of all, I'm going to tell you one thing. I, I'm I'm um, of the opinion I'm a blue sky, blue mm-hmm. ocean thinker. So, oh. if you're in business, then you need to be in business for something very a very unique purpose. Mm-hmm. Even if you're in an industry, like if you're in the car industry, there's a limitless number of cars. Right. But what is it about your car that's going to be different? So, really understanding your value proposition, really understanding your mm-hmm. point of difference comes first. Like, why would you even bring to market? Why would someone choose you over any other? opportunity. Yeah. And I think that a lot of people come into the market and they say, oh, I, I want to be a car owner. Mm-hmm. But they don't understand where they could address a certain need or where they could really strike a difference within uh-huh. that industry. So really solidifying that point of difference, really saying this is the need that I'm going to nurture that no other brand in my category can nurture. Lovely. That's first and foremost. Lovely. And then being very consistent because oftentimes, again, when when organizations are building brand, mm-hmm. if they go in a direction, you know how we are on Facebook, yes. and Instagram, uh-huh. and you're not getting the engagement that you want, or yes. you're not getting the follows and the likes uh-huh. and things like that that you want, you start pivoting every five minutes. Mm-hmm. And that's really, that's not a true mark of a growing brand. You have to be consistent. Audience need consistency Distancy. and frequency. Mm. So I would say that once you solidify that, really just continue. You may be bored mm-hmm. of your brand by the time <laughs> it actually becomes a <laughs> whole household yeah, thing. Uh-huh. But you have to be consistent and frequent with you your know, message. Consistency, when you say that in my head, I hear, oh gosh, that means um, planning my time, time, time management, that mm-hmm. awful word that we all hate, time management. Yeah. But that's what it really comes down to when, you, when you're being consistent. Help us. Yeah. It's 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 not just time management, it's also resource management. How Good. are you utilizing resources resources? How are you utilizing the flat platforms that you have mm-hmm. and the voice that you have? So it's it's also about being efficient mm-hmm. and how you speak about the brand, because that's another thing too. You know, you can't you can't spend 30 pages to explain what the brand is if that's the case you've lost. Yes. Um yes. so it's just learning how to be very concise, efficient, and impactful in mm-hmm. this and in, in the most brief way that you can, right? I'm glad you said that because one of the things I, I love 
Instagram, but I hate Instagram at the same time. Me too. <laughs> because if you've got a five minute plug, you've yeah. really plugged it, they're only letting you have one minute, maybe 30, one minute, 30 seconds. So it's that elevator pitch. You know, we, we constantly uh, in business talk about the elevator pitch, working on that, because that is what gets your message across really quickly. What are your tips when you, when you say to a person, okay, work on your elevator?